All right, welcome back to the shop. So I've got a video today on some heavy equipment stuff. I have a transmission. It's actually a transmission and I guess it's a differential. I don't know, whatever they call it for a CAT D8R Series 2. Uh, it's a 2003 year model machine. Uh, so the total weight of this unit together is 1,830 pounds or 830 kilograms for you European type. Uh, the differential itself, which is this whole half here, is eight. Uh, where is it? 840 pounds or 380 kilograms. The transmission itself is 990 pounds or 450 kilograms. So basically what I have to do, you can see it, the seam right here, it splits apart right there. There's four bolts right here, these 12, 12 point uh, heads on them. I just have to lay this transmission. I'm going to flip it this way so it's laying on this face of the transmission. Um, I undo those four bolts. Uh, connect the crane up to this end of the diff and this whole this whole diff section will lift off and then once I do that Then you'll be able to see the transmission inside the uh, the valves and the planetary uh, Sections to it. So I'm probably gonna do some time-lapse on this. I'll probably just stop and do a little bit of uh, narrative on it as well and uh, We'll see what's inside this thing All right, so I've got the transmission and diff uh, unit sitting up on end it's sitting on the transmission uh, unit itself so here's one issue, you know, Ket has a, like a stand or a jig that you can buy to rebuild these transmissions on. And it gives you room to be able to put the impact below here to get these bolts out. These are the half inch uh, coarse thread 12 point bolts that hold the two together. So what I did is I just, I got some 3 8 bolts, just put them through some of the other holes, put a nut on the bottom, and then I was able to pull these bolts out with the impact. And now that it's sitting down here, and I'm rigged up with the chain on the crane to get it out. All I have to do is just pull these, these off real quick by hand. They're just finger tight, and then I'll be able to lift this section off. All right, I've got those temporary bolts out that I put to hold the two units together, and now we'll lift this up. Hopefully it'll separate without too much of a problem. Apparently this thing's kind of stuck on the spline. Um, we're just got to work a little bit, the screwdriver or a pry bar, get a little more tension on it. Just kind of hanging on this side mostly. I had to set the camera down uh, while I tried to separate that. I finally was able to kind of move this chain over a little bit and then bounce a little bit and I got a screwdriver in there pride. Finally got it to break loose. So I to lift it up and see what's inside. All right, so it seems kind of funny, you know, this big, huge unit, and there's the transmission. <laughs> it's this cute little tiny thing inside here. But most of that is the diff unit and, uh, you know, the power transfer unit to go to the tracks, to drive the tracks. When this is in the unit, these connect the shafts that go through 
do the final drives for the tracks. So I'm just going to set this on a pallet so I can get it out of the way with the forklift. And then I can come over here. We're going to remove the valves. And then we'll be able to pull this planetary section apart and see what, uh, what failed. So I did find a little bit of steel inside when I was uh, you know, pulling the screens and stuff off the bottom. And this looks like it's part of a plate, uh, most likely. Got a zip tie. Someone must have lost a zip tie. And there was a lot of stuff on the screens. Not sure what it is. It almost looks like an adhesive or something, but some of it does look like uh, might be seal material. I'm not sure, but we'll get in here and figure it out. All right, so I thought before I put this on the pallet and move it out of here, I want to show you guys what's inside. Uh, it's pretty cool looking inside. That big ring gear in there. Man, the case is mostly empty on this end. It's transmission kind of fills this section in here and then the ring gear goes over to here it drives the shafts uh, you know the shaft that comes out and then it actually has electronic clutch packs electronic controlled hydraulic clutch packs that um, uh, send the power to one uh, final drive or the other all right so first off before I can pull the planetary unit out I have to move this control valve so it had this electrical connector was coming through here I had to pull this kind of adapter plate off of it. It's two 3 8 bolts, take a 9 16 Had to remove this nut, slid this out, and then uh, disconnected this Deutz connector here. Now I just need to pull these four 3 8 bolts out, and this whole valve unit should come off of there. Uh, maybe not. Alright, yeah, first I have to pull these tubes out before I can remove that valve. Um, I'm just kind of following Kat's disassembly instructions, and they didn't show that step. I think they might have showed that step when you, you know, in the, the paperwork they have for removing the differential from the, um, from the transmission. So I have to pull these out, all three of these plugs, and then I can pull these uh, tubes out. They probably just have uh, yellow O-rings on them. And then when I unbolt this valve, I should be able to pull it off of these small tubes. It, it should come right off there. All right, so I got the valve out, got those tubes out. Came out just the way I thought. I took the four bolts out of the valve unit and I pulled it off and then these tubes were just sitting in there. I just took and put them in the uh, this tub here just because they're gonna be leaking forever, at least until I get this thing back together. Uh, so the next step was to mount the crane to it. Uh, it was kind of weird to mount it. I was hoping I could just go with these two across from each other, but these pickup uh, sensors are in the way and you can't remove this block without taking the gears off. So I was able to get it with three chains instead of two, which is fine. And then I've got to pull, how to pull all these bolts out. So I just need to take these out. I'll throw them in this little tray here and then I'll slide this planetary unit out. And then I can take and uh, move this housing out of the way. All right, so I've lifted off, lifted this out of the unit, or, so I've lifted the planetary unit out of the housing and I just got it up here at eye level where I can kind of see things a little better. And you can see right here, this plate and this top clutch pack, uh, it's broken. You can see these, uh, how these are shaped like that. And we look over here and that's what they should look like where they fit around the dowel. And then if you look in there, it's kind of stuck. Usually these things will kind of drop apart, but look at this, I can't even move anything in there. So I'm guessing that that's the pack that's going to be fried when I get in here. Just rotate this a little bit more. Yeah, so we should see right away uh, what the problem is, you know, as soon as we pull this top housing off. So let me get this situated and then I will uh, start taking it apart. All right, so I found a way to get this off without pulling the gear and we messed with it a little bit more and it came off. That's what the uh, manual says to do next. So I did that. So next I just had to pull the snap ring off, uh, slide this gear off, pull this gear off and then I'll unbolt this manifold and lift it off and then we'll just start unstacking the planetary from there. I'll go ahead and put this on time lapse and we'll, uh, we'll just video it that way.
All right, it's not every day that you have to pry a transmission apart like this, uh, but this clutch pack is definitely burnt. These discs are, they got so hot that once they cooled off, they shrunk and they shrunk up here under the hub here that goes to the balance piston. So I'm gonna have to check that out really good. It looks like it's probably shot. We're gonna have to replace that. And then you can see the broken discs and the disc is shrunk too. It's stuck on all the dowels. So got a little bit of work to get it off the dowels. And then we'll get in here and see if the piston's still good. Um, we'll see if the piston blew out of there or what happened. That's probably the extent of the damage in it, but of course it's got a lot of hours on it, so we're gonna tear it apart and probably change all the clutches in it and then any bad plates that are in here. And then uh, we'll check out the springs and seals and all the pistons as well while we're in here. All right, so we've pulled this uh, planetary unit out of uh, the last clutch pack and I'm pulling these clutches apart. Um, by the way, the rest of the clutches look pretty good. There's some wear and stuff in there, but nothing real bad. Um, we are gonna change all the discs in this. But we get to this last one and these are the, the kind of clutches, they're kind of weird. They're not the paper fiber kind of ones. They're more like a, they seem rubbery. I know they're not rubber, but uh, they got a whole different texture to them. But this one's starting to shell apart really bad right here. See, it's just kind of crumbling. So definitely going to get some new clutches in here. I don't need to bother to stack these in order. And then uh, I'll go through and mic the plates and make sure and check them, make sure they're not warped and make sure they're not warped, uh, you know, beyond the specs. So that's about it. So it was that top clutch that failed. And then it looks to me like um, we had an operator, somebody that tried to fix the problem by continuing to drive the, the dozer. I figured, it'd fix, figured it would fix itself on its own, and it didn't. It just made it a lot worse and cost a lot more money. So that's just kind of the way it goes, I guess. Um, good job, Local 12. Anyways, um, yeah, that's it. I'll do some more video as I get this stuff cleaned up, and then uh, once I get all the parts ordered and stuff like that, um, you know, obviously I'll do a video on putting this back together. I'll, I'll do a separate video on this differential. I'm gonna kind of treat that as a separate item, and then we'll get in here and do this one. Um, but that, that's all for today. Today, I'm just worried about getting the parts and stuff for the transmission section. So anyways, um, thanks for watching. Uh, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, thanks for watching.